Here's a quick sneak peek into the functions I'm gonna be going over in this video. So the first one is gonna be a Hellman transfer where you're only considering the scalar values of everything. So in that case, it's super simple. You just go through the algorithm just like I showed in the previous video, where you pass in your initial altitude, your final altitude that you want. And then from this function, you're gonna get the delta V values for each of the burn and then the time of transfer as well. And I'm also gonna go over uh, more of a 3D case where the Hellman transfer itself is still coplanar just by the definition of a Hellman transfer, it's planar but you can actually orient these orbits all in 3D space so you can change the inclination, the right ascension, and the argument of periaps to kind of get a more 3D feel of these, of these orbits uh, where in this function, again, there's a little bit more to it and then you can 3D uh, propagate with this where this is a spacecraft class which if you see my previous videos, it's exactly the same thing as an orbit propagator class. Uh, I just use this because I have a little bit more functionality that I'll cover in a future video. But from these, you can get an, uh, a plot like this where the straight line through the middle is actually those three orbits in the equatorial case that I had in the previous slide, where these three are actually all equatorial orbits, where the view right now is looking down, straight down from the poles. But you can orient these orbits however you'd like. So the, um, the ones that are inclined now that you can see, uh, I changed the inclination, right ascension, and argument of perigee, just to show that you can kind of mess with these values. This is the 28th video in the video series of Orbital and Cancer Python, and this one I'm going to be going over the home and transfer software. So I want to clear up one thing that I said in the previous video, where Hohmann transfers are actually the most efficient for the two impulse transfers between two coplanar circular orbits. Where in the previous video I said there was the most efficient between two coplanar circular orbits. So the thing is that these are most efficient for two impulse. There's actually a three impulse transfer that can sometimes give less or a smaller delta V value. So in that case, it would be more efficient in the fuel case. And that's called a bi-elliptic transfer, which I'll go over in a future video. But I just wanted to clear up that Hohmann transfer is most efficient for two impulse. So then here's a quick recap of the geometry that was going on. In the scalar case, I'm going to show the algorithm is just straightforward, just like it's done on here. And so as I said, I'm going over two versions with the scalar. And then the second one, I'm going to add in Kepler and orbital elements, where there you can change with those three angles that uh, categorizes the orientation of the orbits in space and doing 3D propagation from that. So the first one I'm going to show, or the first thing I'm going to show is just the main plotting or the main function that you're going to call these functions from. So we have in this file, uh, if you don't recognize any of these imports, uh, I'll leave links in the description to the videos where I cover these. So in the scalar case, it's really straightforward. All you need to do is you define your initial and final altitudes, where for the plots that I've been showing, there have been 1,000 and 10,000, just arbitrarily set. And then you can ignore these values for now, but all you have to do to call this is just t dot home and transfer scalars. All you have to do is pass in these two altitudes, and then from that, you'll get the delta Vs and the time of transfer. So I'll go into that function first. Scroll up, okay. So for this function, you start out with your inputs being those altitudes, and when you pass them in, you have to make sure that you specify that they're altitudes so you can add the central body radius to it because you can pass them with your axes if you want. It's just a little less intuitive to think about than altitudes. And passing in altitude, I set that as true, as again, because it's a little bit, bit more intuitive. You can set it to false if you want to pass in some major axes. And the central body, uh, this doesn't look familiar. All that this central body is, is a dictionary where you have your mu value defined as this and your radius value, so of the Earth, so the mu value, where this is the mass of the Earth times g, where g is a gravitational parameter that can be set like this. Again, if this looks unfamiliar to you, I'll, I'll have links in the description that will guide you to those videos. So once you have your altitude set, this is just the algorithm that I had in the slides where you calculate the time major axis of your transfer orbit as the average of the two circular orbits. You want to calculate the velocities of the circular orbits using the square root of mu over r. And then this math.square root, all you have to do, this is a built-in Python library, where all you have to say is import math. So super simple, Python has that set up really nicely. And then you want to calculate the initial and final orbit velocities of your transfer orbit using that V's Vivo equation that I showed in the previous video. Again, just really straightforward, just looks like this. And then calculate the transfer time, just like the previous slides, math.py, where math, again, that library already has a pi to a certain amount of digits for you, so you don't have to type it in yourself. And then to calculate the delta V of these values, you want to take the absolute value of the difference between these. And you want to take the absolute value because you can go for home and it works both for smaller to larger orbit and then larger to smaller. So you want to make sure that's the absolute value to get that that you want. And then this is a list where each value in the list is just for the delta V for each one of the burns. So then you just return that and then the time of transfer. So that one's really straightforward. So when you run this and then you print it out using kind of just these commands here, just doing a little bit of formatting, 
that looks like this, where the delta V of the first burn was 1.3-ish, and then this delta V of the second burn is 1.0-ish, and then with a transfer time of roughly 1.79 hours. So that's pretty straightforward. And then to get to the more 3D case, the classical orbital elements, uh, for this example, I'm going to go over how I made this plot, where you have one that's equatorial, it's seen it's a straight line from this view, and then one that's inclined and rotated in two, with two different angles. So to get this one, I have first the equatorial case, where you, these are the codes, and again, I'll have a links in the description to guide you to the Kepler and orbital elements uh, videos that I have. So to define these, you want, you want to start by adding, because this is going to be the semi-major axis, you want to make sure you already add that the central body radius to that. You want to make sure that uh, eccentricity is zero, just the way that the Hohmann transfers are defined. And then the inclination is just zero because it's equatorial, and I just kept all these other angles at zero. But you have to make sure that for the orbital elements, the true anomaly has to be zero for the initial orbit, and the true anomaly has to be 180 for the final orbit because you're getting there 180 degrees in true anomaly later. And then the same thing for um, the rotated elements that I have in that plot. Uh, I gave them an inclination of 30 degrees. Again, these are kept at 0 and 180 for the true anomaly, and then rotated 100 degrees for the argument of periaps, and then 20 degrees for the right ascension. And then, again, to call that, it's pretty simple if you just... Oh, no, different one. So then to call it, it's a little bit more complicated, um, where you want to give in your initial codes, you want to specify that they're codes. So codes 0, codes 1 for the two circular orbits. And then in this case, I did want to propagate because I wanted to make this plot. I'll go with the plot after the function. So in this function, I have a lot more uh, arguments just because this function will also handle the scalar case if you just want to pass an R0 or an R1. I just had that in there. But again, it handles the uh, Kepler orbital elements 3D case. Uh, so all these uh, inputs are the same, and then these are a little bit different because you want to propagate or not, and then what you want your time step of the propagation to be. So first, you want to check if the codes are passed in, where if you uh, do a Boolean on an empty list, it'll return false. So if it's just false, it won't run that. So then you want to extract your R0 and R1 values where it's assuming that you're already passing in a semi major axis. So it's assuming you already added the central body radius. But again, if you want to do the scalar case, you wouldn't pass in the cos. You just pass in the altitudes, then that'll get uh, added. The central body radius will get added to that. And then, so these lines are exactly the same as they were in the scalar case, because again, this function covers both the scalar case and the 3D case. So those are all exactly the same. I can zoom in here. And then, so if you want to propagate these, uh, which I did in the case that I'm running. So if you didn't pass in codes, you can propagate them if you just want equatorial and you just want to pass in altitudes. You don't want to pass in the codes. Uh, so I left that option open where it defaults if you just pass in altitudes, it'll do an equatorial plot. Uh, again, zero inclination. And then this is the equation that I haven't shown before, but to calculate the eccentricity of the transfer orbit, all you need is this periaps value and a semi-major axis. And again, I'll post a video um, or some other source to deriving this function or this um, equation. But basically, this is a simplified equation because of the fact that the true anomaly is zero at perigee, so that kind of simplifies this a bit. Um, but just kind of to get a general sense of this, to get an intuition behind this equation, if R0 and A transfer are equal, which is when which means that the periaps value is equal to the same major axis, which is true when you have a circular orbit. So if these two are equal, this R0 over A will be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, which will get you 0 eccentricity. So that's kind of an intuitive way to think about that. And so then you want to get the codes for the transfer orbit, where you want to make sure that they're in the same plane. So you can rotate these orbits however you want, but you just have to make sure all three are in the same plane. So you want to pass in your semi major axis here, your eccentricity, which is calculated there. And then this cos2, this is an inclination. So just whatever inclination that you pass in from the cos, where in this case I'm passing in 30 degrees, you have to make sure every one of them is the same. In that case, it's just passing in 30 degrees here. You want to start with your true anomaly at zero always, because this is the way to find. You're going to rotate by 180 degrees during the transfer for true anomaly. And then you're just passing through, again, your argument of periaps and then the right ascension. And then here's an equation, again, to calculate the periods of the, uh, the, the circular orbits. Uh, this is just for propagation cases, so that you can just get a nice plot of one orbit of them. And then, so create space gap interests, instances, and propagate orbits. Again, this is the same thing as orbit propagator class. Uh, I'll just show here. This is the definition of the spacecraft class, where I, I have it pretty much the same. I just have extra functionality in it, like calculating attitude, Euler's quats, and I'll get to this in future videos. But I just wanted this here because I added in this output uh, dir functionality where I can just uh, set the output of these to go to some 
directory because then that's how I made the animations. Um, yeah, again, so SC0, this can be OP0 as I've usually done it for orbit propagator 0, orbit propagator 1, and then orbit propagator for the transfer orbit. And then again, I have these right output that I'll go over in a future video. But what's important is what you want to return. So you want to return all of these three objects of orbit propagator and then your delta V uh, list where you just have the delta V values of those two. And then again, if you're actually not going to propagate, so again, this like I said, this covers this, this function covers your scalar case as well. So if you're not propagating, you just want to return exactly what the scalar case did is the delta V's and T transfer. So I just, I just wanted to give two options of this of how to do it. So when you're passing in the codes, propagate, again, codes, propagate, all the same thing. And then the T dot plot on orbits, um, again, I'll post a video link in the description um, if you haven't seen that video, but just going over this, I just pass in all six of these trajectories where SE0, SE1, and then, so this is the equatorial cases, and then these are for the rotated cases. You have the labels where I just have an underscore for the rotated ones. And this azimuth and elevation, um, I'm gonna go over in a future video, but basically just gives you a nice view of what you want. Same thing with setting custom axes. And all these aren't really important. If you just do this and then do show plot, you'll get the plot that I did, uh, which is this one. So that's basically that's how you get that. And then if you do it yourself, you can kind of mess around with the plot and mess with the views and all that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that function. And then that's what the output would be. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, again, be sure to leave a like uh, to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And for the next video, um, again, you guys tell me what you want to see. So I have two ideas. One is Pluto a planet. So basically, one of the reasons that it was downgraded to a dwarf planet is because the very center of the Pluto system is not within Pluto's radius. So that makes it orbit around the very center. So you can see the black orbit here is Pluto where the very center is in that orbit. So say for the Earth-Moon system, the center of mass of the two is still within Earth's radius. So it just causes the Earth to wobble. It doesn't cause the Earth to rotate or to orbit around some arbitrary point, the very center. And then another idea that I'm going to do eventually um, is a uh, ground track. So basically this is what lat long looks like for the earth, a flat map of the earth. And then for ground track, so say if you have a LEO, like the International Space Station, its trajectory will just look like a sine wave like this, and it'll be rotated because the earth is rotating underneath it. But there's other special types of orbits that have very interesting ground tracks, like say a geo satellite, which is actually just stationary. It's just a point on the equator. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, let me know in the comments uh, which video you'd like to see next, and also leave any questions in the comments that you may have. And thank you for watching.